The other really interesting thing botanically about the parish of Cookham Village is we've got flora that represents both heathland character and the chalky downs. This is a chalk loving plant, it's called dogwood, quite sanguine, but it does have very nice purple stems in the winter, very nice flowers and berries that are really important for migratory birds. But of course what's happened, because this area is such a, a well used public open space if you like, is that you've got a series of desire lines, as we call them, developing that are regularly used, that have been used for actually many years. Okay, so this is the first view we've had of the um, Grove Farm Hill. Between us and, and the hill, you've got a typical Hampshire hedgerow with hazel, hawthorn, holly. Um, but again, it's been cut very narrow, so it doesn't really form a particularly good boundary. We're now in the proposed site. It starts from this boundary and the back of it, the, the wood and then it'll just go, it'll occupy all the areas that are defined by the housing or the boundary trees. And But it will actually go beyond Jack Reed's Cots. Now I suspect that will be, that will be the kind of open space element because you're getting towards the Hart, River Hart floodplain. But, um, and I suspect this you know, if you were whacking houses in, you'd probably have, you'd probably need to have a balancing pond here. So you know these lovely balancing ponds where they dig yeah. big holes in the yeah. ground with all the plastic showing and yeah. security yeah. fencing around them. So just picture that here, although they might integrate it a bit into, into open space. So this is likely to be kind of open space, I'd imagine, just because it's so wet and because it's near the woodland. Um, but clearly that hill, because it's free draining, it's, and it's got no services underneath it. It's perfect for just whacking in there. Uh, the even got kind of solution, which is very, very high density. Again, if you think back to what I was saying about this beautifully undulating landscape, you've got the tump or the Grove Farm Hill there, which is the centre of the housing proposals. And then you come off that slope, and this is this is let's be like the original Nether House Moor that I'm sure extended into the housing over there. And it is, even after a very dry winter, it is wet. You've got a lot of rush growing, which are totally indicator species of waterlogged ground. In the summer, you've got marsh thistle, and you've got, you've got a lot of good wet grass and plants. So this is actually, it's been left, and uh, it's quite bad. Growing. So this kind of intermediate habitat between mature woodland and open landscape can be very rich in insects and birds. So white throats, for example, nest in, these, in this area. It's lovely to see deer. When I was growing up, I never saw deer, and it's really special. But one thing to point out is that the population of deer in, the, in England has doubled in 10 years. Now, that does have an impact, because there's no natural predators, and they graze they have an impact on, on certain species, nightingale is one of them, because they, particularly muntjac, but also roe, they have a browsing line and they take out a lot of the low level scrub. <coughs> so a lot of the typical woodland birds that nest in the low density, that need that low density, are now deprived of habitat. So, you know, the environment's about balance really, and um, although it's, it's wonderful to see you know, things like deer, and they, you know, they, they always love you to see, because they get, we get that sense of it being a wild, natural place. Um, there are more, there are other species that are, are declining rapidly because of other reasons. So um, it's really important that we focus on those more specialised species, because they're far more threatened. Is the combination of shade and light and so on, and the marginal vegetation, actually means it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not that bad. You get all sorts of different ecologies adapting to different circumstances. It has a thriving colony of at least a common crop, um, and they've been here for years. It's presumably the landowner's land, but for a community project, it would be fantastic to sort of cut some of this back, get a bit more light in, make it a bit more of a positive feature for, for local people. But I just want to illustrate one other thing. You've got what they call what is known as a rude raw community, and that is nettles, goose grass, a bit of white dead nettle, a few rank grass, and dandelion. These are plants that grow in disturbed, enriched soil, so that you, you lose any diversity. And all, all that's happened here is they probably, when they were constructing a housing estate, they stripped off the topsoil. That's the sort of thing that happens in any sort of development, you know. So I think making contact with the people that live here is going to be really, really important because it, it'll at least double the amount yeah. of people that have concern about the development. And they, they, they're going to use it more than most people in Crook and Village because they probably don't come this far out.
All right, and that's, um, it's still singing. There's a skylark singing. And there's, although, because it's a bit of a grim day and it's a bit later on in the morning, there's, there's not others, but there's at least three, if not four pairs here. And when this was in set aside, there was about a dozen pairs on this hill. Because this is perfect for the uh, skylark. They like the wide open spaces, they like the gentle slopes, they like the visibility and the openness. And one of the characteristics about Hart District is we, we're generally quite a wooded area, aren't we? So apart from the Hampshire, the Hampshire Downs, or the Hart Downs as it's sometimes called, there's very few skylarks in this, this area. So this hill is the best place for a long way around for skylarks. But it depends on the wider population. You don't, you don't generally, birds don't generally exist just one pair in isolation. They obviously, any population needs to, to mix. So there's an important population on this hill, at Cross Farm, and then at Cronda Road behind, um, the big field behind there, and then in the, in the Hot Valley. So you've actually got a population of about 12 pairs of skylark. And if you go much below that, it's a cut the population Viability. What it shows is, is, is you know, there's, there's a lot more to the landscape structure and you can actually begin to understand the landscape. And what we've got here, we've actually got an ancient landscape here. So it just shows that this isn't just an, in, an intensive farm landscape, it's one that still retains some of its historical features which add to its quality for everyone. So we need to, we need to um, sort that out. Okay. Uh, but, but this